you're going to hear this argument, all of you out there. Hey, there's nothing new here. Nothing new with genetic engineering. It's like beer and yeast. We've been doing it for thousands of years. By the way, whenever they tell me that, I say, good, let's go to the patent office. There's nothing new here. You shouldn't have been all your patents. <laughs> no one's ever agreed to do that so far. It's strange, isn't it? All right. So, okay, let, uh, they, they have taken, for instance, the, the gene responsible for, for flounders being able to live in cold temperatures, and they put it in tomatoes. So the tomatoes can be frozen for long periods of time and then given to us to eat, which is like a terrible idea anyway. Right? But how do they get the fish gene into the tomato? There's no natural mating. And thank goodness for that, because we know they also put human genes into mice. I mean, the, the scenarios aren't pretty. So how do they do it? All right, well, here's how they do it. They take a micro-injection needle, right? They attach the genetic construct you want, in this case, the flounder gene, to a... What, what invades cells? When you get a cold or you get sick, what invades your cell? Viruses and what else? Bacteria. Yeah, they've got to invade the cell, right? They've got to invade the cell and drop off this gene in the cell. So they use a bacteria or a virus. They attach it to a bacteria... Bacteria goes into the cell and deposits it off somewhere. I'm not too sure. It's a very imprecise technology. So in order to promote the use of that, to get that antifreeze protein going, they, in every instance they attach a viral promoter. They call it the on and off switch. Usually they use cauliflower mosaic virus. But that's not enough. Then they decide, how are we ever going to test that it's actually in there, that we've got this genetic cassette in there, and they have genes in there that are resistant to acanamycin and ampicillin. So in every cell of every genetically engineered food, you have the bacteria, the new genetic construct never seen before in food before, the new viral promoter never seen before, and genes that are specifically there to resist antibiotics. There is something definitely new here. Every poll shows 80 to 90 percent of Americans want genetically engineered food labeled. And about 60 to 70 percent say if it was labeled, they wouldn't buy it. And by the way, people say, oh, I've heard Monsanto say, oh, that shows people, you know, how, how, how crazy people are about te new technologies. No, it doesn't. I wish we were more skeptical about new technologies. No. What it says is no one is getting up in the morning in America or in the world saying, I can't wait to buy a genetically engineered food today. No one. Because it offers no one any benefits except Monsanto and, people, and farmers where it's more convenient to spray their fields. So if somebody says to you, listen, here's something that gives you no benefit, zero benefit, but it presents these risks. It can take, make a safe food and make it toxic. It can have new allergens in it. It will definitely lower the nutrition in your food and could depress your immune system. Oh, and did I tell you? It can make you resistant to antibiotics like cannabis and ampicillin. Oh, and there's a cancer risk in, in some of the dairy genetic engineering we're doing. But I have no benefits to offer you. Of course you wouldn't buy it. You'd be insane to buy anything like that. No benefits and all those risks, right? So what do you do? Well. We're trying to, with your right to know, we're trying to give you back what Michael Taylor and Monsanto took away from you. We're trying to give you back your right to choose. And we do it through, again, an easy-to-follow shopper's guide, all the information you could possibly want, and an organizing tool. And by the way, we also give you all the ingredients. And the good news here is there's all, because of all the good work so many of us have done, there's only four major crops that are genetically engineered. Corn, soy, cotton, and canola. That's it. Right? Those are the only commercialized crops. So when people say 60% of our food is already contaminated with GMOs, that is incorrect. Almost none of your whole foods are contaminated. There is no genetically engineered uh, uh, fish, no genetically engineered meat. All your whole food, fruits and vegetables are not genetically engineered. It's almost all in your processed foods. And not even all of that. We have in your oils, for example, obviously corn oil is not a good thing, or canola, but olive oil is fine. There's no genetically engineered olives. So we give you those tips. You can go through this. And so much of it's your high fructose corn syrup and your processed food that's got that soy lesson, which no one should be eating anyway. So you can avoid this stuff very, very easily, and you'll have a much healthier and much better diet. There is no commercialized genetically engineered rice. There is rice that has been used in, in, in field trials that has contaminated rice throughout the South and is costing this season alone $400 million in damages. But we just won a recent law case against field trials saying no more field trials can take place until they do an in, in environmental impact statement on contamination. We also just won a major case, by the way, here in California just this spring saying for the very first time an approved genetically engineered crop, alfalfa, they stopped all sale and all planting of the alfalfa because it, was, it could contaminate organic and conventional alfalfa.
So the first time ever. So we're beginning to see the courts really respond as well on this. Never let anybody use that word progress, say you're against progress. You say progress towards what? Are, are monoculture, genetically engineered farms, right, where animals are given bovine growth hormone, where confined animals are creating E. coli that are threats. Is that your view of the, of the future of farming in America? Well, that's not my view of progress. I'm for sustainable, appropriate, scaled, humane, social justice. Th those are the things we fight for. That's our progress.